Hey everyone, welcome to Force Conversation, the show where two scruffy looking nerf herders like to get together and talk about Star Wars. My name's Jay. And I'm Colin. Welcome to the show. Welcome everyone. So how you doing, Cole? I'm really good. How are you, my friend? Yeah, cool, man. Ready to talk some Star Wars. Yeah, I am one with the Force, and the Force is with me, and I am feeling very Jedi today. Yeah, so you've got your robes on there. I have got my Jedi robes. I'm feeling at one. And you're, and you're Superman, so you're like a super Jedi. They're the best. Super <laughs> Jedis. We're going to rule the world. <laughs> and I've got massive sleeves. Ooh. Wizard sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, um, so we've got a bit of news this week then. Yes, lots of news going on this week. Should we get started? Um, yeah, let's get on the first bit. News! Um, right, so first item on my news agenda. Oh, Woody! Woody Howson. Mm. There's What's been Woody a little story. Well, Woody, he's been, um, he's been uh, suggested about being in the Han Solo film. Yeah. Yep. That's but right. who has he been taught in his playing? So, okay, so there's a report, um, I think it came from the Hollywood Reporter, um, and it was to say that Woody Harrelson is in talks to play an early mentor of Han Solo in the Han Solo, uh, the young Han Solo standalone movie. But this is not anything that's been, that's actually been confirmed by Lucasfilm or Disney or by Woody's agents or anything like so that. So it's not a spoiler? It's not a spoiler. It's um, it's just something that's this report's come out and it's it's on loads of websites. Um, so yeah, so a mentor to a young Han Solo. In fact, uh, do we want to see that? Specifically, an early mentor to a young Han Solo. Well, um, you know, Han Solo. It depends where they go because because you want to see how he sort of became wily and. You know, you learn to be a smuggler and all that kind of stuff. I guess if they're going back that far, mm. um, it, you know, he would have learned it from somewhere. This could be someone who he either worked with in the early days, you know, who he kind of learned the trade from, or it could be it could be someone who like teaches him everything. It could be someone that he t- he ends up having as an enemy in the end. Do you know what I mean? Like starts out mm. as a as a mentor and then eventually like they they become enemies. Then there's the other thing of like you know I thought we'd see more harm going to the Imperial Academy and stuff like that. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm hoping it's not going to dwell on him being too young. The last one I want to see is Han Solo well, Oliver. Well, he be too young because we've seen Alden, uh, was it Alden Emmerich that, that's, yeah. playing, um, that's playing him. So we already know the kind of age he's going to be. And, and then that also, in a way, causes a little bit of a problem because um, if he... I don't think that they'll they'll young him up too much. Maybe there'll be an, another person playing an even younger Han Solo. Well, I was going to say, I mean, I reckon these... there could be a good, like, if half the film is about him as a kid growing up mm. or something like that, when, when he, like, saying this bloke, like, Woody could be, like, a Fagan-type character, mm. you know, teaching... Uh... Well, actually, if you think about it like this, maybe there'll be, like, and of course, this is all speculation, because no one knows anything, but maybe there'd be something like some flashbacks throughout, mm. you know, kind of like when we saw in Rogue One, where Jin saw younger Jin, right? So maybe he sees, um, fla- we see flashbacks of him mm. younger where this guy is his mentor, takes him in and shows him the ropes. But then when we see current Han Solo at that stage of the movie, then he's his enemy or something like that. Mm. Or, you know, maybe it, it, you'll get a sort of background and current background, current, it'll keep like switching between. Because, of course, being a, um, an anthology movie, they mm. can do whatever they want. So, they, you know, they can um, go away from the... Um, from the standard format but that being said whatever they decide to do with it um woody holson he's you know he's a good actor he can play a lot of different roles he's good at comedy he's good at being a bad guy he's good at being like crazy he's um he's played so many different and he he often plays like a bit of a cowboy kind of character well han solo essentially is a space cowboy right Mm. so i think he would be a a, he's a good actor. B, he'd be a good person for that kind of role. And I think we've kind of seen him in that role in the, the Hunger Game movies. Well, this is the thing. I think I've seen it. 
this is my concern. It doesn't sound like something new to me. Bringing in bringing in a mentor type cat. I want. To, I didn't want to see a Han Solo film in the first place, but if so, I did want to see one, I want to see young Han Solo in his prime, being a smuggler, doing cool stuff. I don't well, want to see maybe. a story about. Uh, you know, oh, how his mentor is not his friend. Maybe we're getting it all wrong as well. Apart from the fact that Woody Harrelson isn't English, we would never get it wrong, by the way. <laughs> but there's no right at the moment, <laughs> and also this isn't even confirmed, so it hasn't happened. But this is just really a speculation. Uh, uh, I'm wearing a Jedi robe. I, I don't you get can, things you've, wrong. You've seen through the I'm, force. I see the force. <laughs> I see the future always in motion. Um. Yeah, maybe we're uh, we're looking at it the wrong way. Um, apart from not being English, um, he could well, be that's one his, of his first problem. Well, he could be one of his mentors in the Imperial Academy, right? Like, if they well, go, he that puts way. on an English accent. We ain't having no Imperials without a lovely English accent. Well, unless he's a stormtrooper, then he doesn't have an English accent. Mm. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like, like where, where do you think he would fit in? Like, let's say they do go with it, okay? Whether or not we want to see that, let's say they do go with it. What do you think of A, Woody Harrelson as an actor playing the role? And B, um, what kind of mentor do you think that they would be considering? I'd like him to be working in the death bar. In the death bar? <laughs> Yeah, you know, because um, <laughs> didn't it come up in something recently that the Death Star has got a bar? Did it? I, I, I remember reading it. something. Oh, I okay. read something the other day, and it said that there's there, there definitely was a bar in the Death Star, okay. and they called it a Death Bar. Brilliant. And I and obviously Woody could re- reprise his role from Cheers and work <laughs> in the Death Bar, and be and be giving Han advice over the bar. But would the Death Star be in this? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like, not. Han's like that moon. He's like he doesn't even oh. know. <laughs> well, he was drunk. He was in a death bar. I didn't realize. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway. So but maybe that's... this means all Star Destroyers have a bar. You know. Maybe, you know. Maybe, be, yeah. On that top bit, it'd be quite nice to have a little bar, a bit like yeah, Ten can, Forward in Star yeah, Trek. Like Ten Forward. I was going to say you can see out to look at the stars <laughs> as you flow along. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. So anyway, that's that's the story about. Um, Woody Harrelson and possibly playing a, a mentor to young Han Solo. Yeah, I would like, to be honest, he's a good good actor. I'd love to see him in a role in Star Wars. Um, yeah, I'm just, I think I'm just still not 100% sold on the whole Han Solo film as, as it is. So and when we get a bit closer, I'll get a bit more excited, I'm sure. In a way, right, I, I would kind of prefer to see him as some kind of bounty hunter. Yeah. I think he'd play that role so well. And um, I don't want to get this um wrong but his his dad's past plays a lot into the way that he is as an actor and all that and mm. uh i think he was some kind of hitman or something his dad so you know like dude make him a bounty hunter. he could be the guy that yeah. mentors boba fett <laughs> right that's gonna work better but anyway whatever let's see where they go with it he you could know, be running a crash the, the with young boba thing, fett young lando and young oh, han solo the, yeah it. crash definitely like muppet <laughs> babies but star wars babies don't give them ideas man don't do it but there was one other thing with this um when they, they've gone to uh woody harson now but apparently before woody harson they were looking at christian bale for this role Ooh. Why do you say ooh? Because I'm not a massive fan of Christian Bale. No, he's a good actor. No. Though. He's a good actor. He can play all kinds of roles. Okay, he gives Batman a lisp, but you know whatever. Mm. Um, I don't like him. But he's got he's got that voice from the Dark Knight onwards, and when he's Bruce Wayne, he's got a lisp for some reason. But I quite liked him in um, Terminator Salvation, actually. Yeah, he can was play a lot of he roles. He's yeah. A, yeah. yeah, but. He's a good actor. I mean, but I don't know that he would have been right for this kind of. No, he's not fun. Role. I yeah. I want Han Solo film to be fun, and Christian Bale does not say fun. Yeah, he takes. He says me. serious. Yeah. He's yeah. He takes yeah, it too Woody serious. Halston, fun, right? He can. Do yeah, he's fun. fun yeah, that's why I like him. Yeah, he's got so that he good would be all right. Background. And, yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. That's uh, that's our. Well, that's that, that story uh-huh. dissected and completely. Yep shot down um <laughs> next shot story down? well i shot first um so let's talk about something that has got me very excited 
I think this got everyone very excited. And oh, I'll tell you what, if right, let's first of all, we're talking about the mid season trailer for Star Wars Rebels. Mm. Now this came out of the blue. I was not expecting this. And uh someone lovely some lovely fellow posted it on the Force Awakens not Force Awakens, Force Conversations <laughs> um Facebook page, which everyone can have a look at and join. Um and I was thinking, oh, what's this trailer? It's going to be an episode trailer for Rebels. Oh, my lordy. <laughs> I was not ready for for just the awesomeness. Oh, it, it was good, really it? cool. Yeah, it, it looked really good, didn't it? How exciting and a bit darker, a bit more serious, kind of going more in the direction that we've been Rogue wanting one. to see. We've, we've talked about so much. Well, just going in, in more... To the story, story it should direction. be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean... First impression, Jack, I think we should have a little bit of a dissection of, of what happened in the trailer, but my initial first reaction was, I hope this is what they focused the whole of this last half of the series on, season, whatever you, if you're in America. Yeah, um, because ultimately, that's, as you said, that's the story we want to see. We mm. want to hear about the rebellion. We want to take all the cues from Rogue One and let's go down that road and not have some crappy filler episodes and Definitely. some comedy wacky episodes and some some of your mate the bloke I can never name remember. Uh, oh, so Hondo, yeah. oh. Hondo, oh. yeah, Honda. Um, so we don't want him. If they stick to this storyline and every episode follows this storyline through, I will be a very happy man. Yes. Yeah. I think too. that's the key now, bit. Okay. Um, how many episodes? I'm just trying to find how many. Um episodes do we have left how many were did we get in before the break was it seven yeah about that so uh and what is it it's a 22 episode season something like that isn't it so hopefully it is rebels as long as clone wars was I'm, i think it's short season isn't it? is it I, i'm just i just need to i'll, I'll work this don't out. know um but yeah um it, i think there'll probably still be a couple Ooh. of filler episodes it's getting too hot in there huh yeah it's hot in there um but I, I, I do don't think. remember owning a droid. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I did think that this season's trailer looks absolutely amazing. It was very exciting the whole way through. And are we going? Should we just talk about who was in it? And, and yeah, I stuff, wrote yeah? some notes. So should okay. I just go yeah, through my go notes? Through the excite- we'll just, yeah, Here's the things that I got discussing. all excited about. So first thing kicks off with Obi-Wan's voice. Uh, Ezra's having a little dream yeah. and you can hear Obi-Wan's voice. It's like, oh, Obi-Wan. Warning. And then you realise he goes to, yeah, he goes to the little um, message thing that he's had from season one with uh, Obi-Wan's the message. The whole, yeah, yeah, where he was warning people not to go to the Jedi Temple. So I thought, so that, so then that, that calmed me down a bit because I think, oh, well, it's not what I'm thinking it is. Um, but obviously that, that was exciting. Cuts to um, Chopper getting hit and smashed across the yes. room. So immediately excited again. <laughs> um, we see Thrawn, obviously. He's got death troopers with him. He has, yeah. Um, obviously we see... Um, oh, we see um, Droidicas. Yes. Which is always yes, good for me. I love of, them. You like love them. those bad boys. So we're getting um, some of the old um, battle droids and that coming into it. Yeah. Um, we hear about uh, that Thor knows about Fulcrum and is yes. hunting him down. And he's actually saying it to um, Callus, who is Fulcrum. Yeah. So that's good. So, so I'm put, I'm thinking pretty much his and, uh, his identity is going to get revealed. I think. To yeah, the I think Empire. he's going to get found out. Yeah, I think so. Um, we see Tarkin on a hologram. Yep. Who's the, when he says about Fulcrum, he's, he puts his hand on that helmet. You see that? He, he says something about um, Fulcrum, he, he puts his hand on a helmet. Now, whose helmet is that? Um, it looks like... I'm looking at it now, it kind of looks like one of the... Uh, it's kind of similar to the Night Sisters one. Uh, not Night Sister, what was her name? Seventh Sister, but it's not hers. And it's got some graffiti on it, so uh, I'm guessing that's... Uh, I don't know. Sabine's left out for him. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? It's, um, some, someone will know on the group. So if you're on the group and you you should be watching this, leave a message. 
yeah, yeah, you better do. I'll smack your bum, otherwise. Um, the other thing was obviously um, something I sent you the other day because I was reading through the Rogue on Visual Dictionary and under the Death Star bit. Mm-hmm. And under the history bit of the Death Star, it talks oh, about yeah. how how Saw Gorilla, what's the name? Gorilla? Guerrera. Gorilla. It's not, not a Saw Gorilla. Saw Gorilla. <laughs> That's a different character. He, um, he, there was a bit where it just says that he um, came close to thinking that he'd found traces of the Death Star or, or that he, he might come on to the yeah, fact that there was a Death the, Star the, being built. Yeah. And so I said to you, oh, do you reckon this would be the storyline from the Rebels? Yeah. And then, I, you know, I think from this trailer, it was almost leading that. That's yeah. that's where it was going, definitely. 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 So that that's exciting. Um, we see the dark saber and, uh, and Sabine... Sabine's getting trained to use it by um, Kanan. Yeah, so so that a lot of that? questions around that for me because I, I thought that was a Jedi thing first of all, and she's not definitely not it's Jedi. Mandalorian, wasn't it? The, the, the oh, black yeah, saber, yeah. right? But um, you know, I know, and it's it's from her family and all that stuff. But that's one of those. That's one of the things I'm like. Yeah, yeah really? that was the bit that made me most nervous because I didn't want a story all about Mandalorian on her. And her because she's rubbish. She's and a rubbish she's character. She's not an honourable Mandalorian, so no, Jock she's rubbish. <laughs> yeah, and so there was almost like because she can weld the dark saber, she's going to be the leader of the Mandalorian. It's, it's her family saber, isn't it? Something like that. It comes from her mum or something like that. I'm guessing. Anyway, yeah, a bit, yeah. it's a vib- little vibrating tool for my mum. <laughs> yeah. um, less, less we hear about that, the better. To be fair. Um, we see Saw, he's definitely in there. Um, there are some amazing looking space battles. Yes. And I you've mean, got the, um, those, uh, the TIE Fighters, I, I can't remember what, what the type is. They've got three wings. Oh, the they, new ones. Yeah. Well, they came from um, something like uh, one of the Knights of the Old Republic or one mm. of those things, didn't they? I, I'm probably wrong about that, but it's from some expanded universe game. Yeah. Mm. Um, I can't remember which one. Uh, it might even be from an old TIE Fighter game or something like that. Um, so they've been brought in. I can't remember what they call them either, but they look pretty cool. Uh, they, they do got, look they good. They've got like, the Interceptor wings, but three mm. of them. Um, so, yeah, you well, they were in Rogue One, weren't they? Were they? I'm sure they were. The main ones in Rogue One are the TIE Strikers. So they, they're, they're flat because oh, they yeah, fly yeah. in mm. atmosphere due to crosswinds affecting other types of TIE Fighters, but not these. Good knowledge mm. here, Jay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, anyway, and, and that course, space, you, the space battle not stuff only wicked. Did you see Obi Wan in a uh, hologram? You see him at the end. Mm. You cool jumped into the gun. I still got other things to oh, tell sorry, you about. I thought you were finishing there. No, oh, no, yeah. man. Yeah, rewind. Wedge. Um, you see no, Wedge. Wedge. You see Wedge. Yep. He's now, <laughs> he's now a fully fledged rebel. Yeah, he was in the old X-wing pilot costume. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a lot of fawn in it. Definitely a lot of fawn. You see, he and and there's, but also there's dialogue between Sabine and and the rebels. So it's now it's the game is afoot. And if you, you want see to be Sherlock Holmes, um, talking to the rebels as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, mm. so there's actually dialogue between the two factions. So yeah. I think it's it's all coming together, isn't it? It's yeah. it's really exciting. That 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 bit was just as exciting for me as as what we were just about to talk and about. Thrawn's, which is Thrawn's crush, um, threatening them, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, and but the fact that he knows who they are, they know who he is. It, it's bringing it all together, and to me, that gives it more of a sense of urgency. Something's going to happen. Yeah. And then, as you've just got all excited and premature, spoiler, on, <laughs> spoiler Obi Wan well, is okay. in. But how did, how is he revealed? He you see oh, him. He's a, he's on the little campfire. Else. And you see yeah, else, well, that's what I'm else. saying. Ah, go. Darth Maul. Right, now this this kind of bugs me, in a way. But go because on. we're not going to see it in a film. Is that yeah. What yeah. Because basically there's the showdown between Darth Maul and Obi-Wan. Yeah. And um, so, well, we'll talk about that in two seconds. Mm-hmm. The, the one thing that's not in this is Ahsoka. No, that's right. And that to me so makes it even I, I honestly think now after mm. reviewing a few of the and reading up on a few things that I don't think Ahsoka's coming back no 
I think that basically because we saw the owl thing that mm. follows her around everywhere and that's now left after she supposedly could have died and it went and hung out with old um, Bendu. Um, I think that's it. They're not going to show her anymore in Rebels. You think they'll save her? I think they're going to leave a door open. They could reintroduce her, but I think that's it. Save her for a standalone movie or something like that. Mm, I, think so. movie. I, I don't think she's going to show up again. Mm. Well, Which I'm disappointed about. But there you go. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am actually disappointed. But if they're going to give me Obi Wan, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. I am disappointed about it though because I would have liked to have a, a bit more of a definitive finish to the story because everyone is kind of left going, oh, well, what happened? Like, you know, um, I would have, I would have liked them to sort of tie that. Up. But you know, there's still supposedly another couple of seasons, so maybe. I mean, it makes to be honest, it makes sense that if Ahsoka's not going to be there, that she died fighting Vader. That's where she's it's just that the fact they didn't show it is yeah. what's annoying. Yeah. But I think they've done it on purpose because I think that's the end of her story. Yeah. Unless they come up with something new. Right. Yeah. That, that and that's where I think that's why I think they're going to leave it like that. And that's why they've shown the, the bird. They thing. don't want to close the door on it too much because they can. Yeah, nothing they can permanent. Find a way around. Because yeah. these days they can't backtrack. Yeah. Because yeah, everything's yeah, canon. Yeah. They can't backtrack, and we'll go on to this a bit later on when we talk about novels. <laughs> it's annoying oh, yeah. me. <laughs> oh, good, okay. I'm interested to hear what you've got to say there. Yeah, um, yeah okay, I'm just going to skip to that last bit with Obi-Wan. Um, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. The, more yeah. Thing, the more thing does bug me, because, you know, when, they, when they've when they sort of talked about they're not done with um, Obi-Wan um, in, the, in the saga movies, mm. but... Look, everyone's pretty sure that Ewan McGregor's going to end up playing him again. Ewan McGregor really wants it. He him. will, 100%. Everyone wants it, right? So you're going to see another um, Obi-Wan movie. You can't want to see Darth Maul there. Now, I did hear something. I don't know where I heard it, but supposedly Darth Maul's meant to run into Vader at some point this season. So, yeah, I'd heard that. Right, yeah. I'd heard that. So yeah. maybe this goes nowhere. Maybe Maul... You know, escapes or I, I mean, but then it's kind of it pointless. Could, it might even be a bloody force stream for all we know. Could be a force stream. Yeah, it's out of context, right? So we're just seeing a slight clip there, him sitting at a campfire in middle of Tatooine. But we do know that Maul went that way. Maul's gone looking for it. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. They've set up that Maul was going to find Obi Wan. Mm. So I wasn't surprised when we saw Obi Wan that we saw Maul. As soon as we saw Obi Wan, I was expecting to see Maul. To be honest. Yeah. Oh, you were because that because that was the story they were setting up. Yeah, so I mean, it was a bit of a. But if you look at where he is, he's just sitting in the middle of some open desert, and then Maul just strolls up. It's like it's a whole planet, dude. It's a whole planet. Uh... It's not like you know, it's like you sitting in, in like the middle of the desert in Australia, and I get off a pl- I get on a plane and go, you know what, Colin? He's yeah, he's he's there. I know that they've got the force, but the thing is, though, <laughs> you would sense my force energy. Yeah, I probably would, and I. Yeah. The other thing that was quite cool is you saw Maul doing uh, martial arts, beating up some uh, droids, kicking their asses. Um, you got to see Mon Mothma riding in the ghost. Yes. With the crew. Yes, that was a good shout. Um, so yeah. that kind of ties, you know, ties them all together. Um, you mm-hmm. get to see uh, General Dodonna um, and all those guys. Uh, you see, um, I'm looking at pictures of it here, by the way. You see oh, Mon Mothma okay. in a hologram and they're all around the table. Um yeah, you get to see all the, the Rebel fleet, the Hammerhead um, ships. Corvettes. Yeah. Um, and you've got a lot more lightsaber action with with um, Ezra and, you know, obviously them training. So I tell you, Sabine. my thoughts now on Rebels are, yeah. now that we've seen Rogue One, mm. just get rid of Kanan and Ezra. I think yeah, having I the Jedis in it is, is just detracting from... Definitely. As much as I love the Jedi side of Star Wars, probably more than anything else, it doesn't fit because it doesn't. It doesn't, story, it does, it? Well, it's completely all it's making me think is, well, how are they going to get rid of them? I spend my whole time thinking, yeah. you're not in the rest of the film. You know, you know what it does for me? It makes Jedi's a little bit less special yeah. because when, if you particularly them two. Because they yeah, seem so much more powerful than Luke than ever was other, than any other Jedi. Yeah. <laughs> but if you like think back to being a kid right and you watched um the first star wars when obi-wan tells luke about uh, this is a jedi's weapon and explains the lightsaber yeah. and who the jedi were an elegant right? weapon they were this, a more like, civilized time even though he was was is one they were like almost mystical and it was like oh they, they were you yeah. know around during the Clone people Wars never seen them that. 
and yeah, they're not a like hands, thing. hands sort of a reaction to them. Doesn't believe not. in them. It's like yeah. yeah, I've flown all over the galaxy. I've never seen it, but well, if you even though it's only like if thirty you years, had flown ago. all over the galaxy. You'd have seen all of this. You'd have seen Jedi's everywhere, Night Sisters, and fucking like you know, mm. everyone has a lightsaber. So it's not like it's uncommon. <laughs> And that's what they've done here. And uh, yeah, I would like to see a lot less of it because now where Rebels is um, in timeline is only like a couple of years. So it's not even like, well, yeah. you know, well, well, not, if, if no Rebels Jedi's started five years extinct. before. Yeah, like yesterday, they became extinct yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> well, my understanding is the timeline was that Rebels started five years before A New Hope mm. or Rogue One now. Um, so uh, yeah. we're three years into Rebels. So we've got two years left. Supposedly. Supposedly. Yeah. Now, I don't know. It doesn't... And the other thing, when we're talking about timelines, going back to my Rogue One Visual Dictionary, which is the best book ever. It's a damn I've got, book. I've got to say how brilliant it is. Vader was 41 by the time of um, yes. Rogue One. Yeah. I thought he was older than that. No, I didn't. I, I always knew that. 41? Yeah. He seems well young to be this old git. Well, so in Return of a Jedi, yeah, he looks like forget. a right old git. Yeah, but don't forget, he's A, you know, full of dark side, which drains you anyway. And he's mm. been in that suit, so he's all like pasty and withered, and, you know, he's he's damaged. And I don't by the know. Time even Jedi, even, like, even Force Ghost. By the time of Jedi, he's what, like early 50s or something, isn't he? Because you've got. Well, what no, is it's it, only like, about six years, three, isn't, it, isn't it? Three years between. Um, Each one, hoping, yeah, about six yeah, years. So, so he's, yeah, he's in his late forties. So he's forty-six. Yeah, so he's an only old six guy. years older than me, pal. Yeah, I know, but dude, if you if you were like full of the dark side, and you were burnt, and you'd been like like floating in back to tanks and stuff. Yeah, but what about a suit all your life? You'd what about Sebastian with, Shaw, Force Ghost? Yeah, he was old. He looked well old. <laughs> he yeah. looked like an old man. Yeah, but in those days, people looked older. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Okay. It's true. In the olden days, people looked older, right? No? Look at old pictures of someone who's like 30. You'd be like, ah, oh, dude must be 50. It's like, no, he's yeah. 30. Well, they lived harder yeah. lives, that's why. Not, yeah, that's not, not, not sat on bloody YouTube life. all day. Exactly. Vader lived a hard life, man. He got he lost his limbs, right? He was like angry, so he's all dark-sided up. He had to swim in back the tanks, have a bath. Yeah, yeah. Then he had yeah. to stay in that suit that hurt and everything. You know, he yeah, smelt yeah. like old leather feet. Yeah, exactly. He smelt like old leather feet. Anyway, we're going off topic. Let's go back to Rebels. <laughs> um, Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, what else? Yeah, you see Saw Gerrera in there fighting alongside. Uh, and he actually didn't sound as crazy. He seemed, he seemed fairly as normal. crazy yet. He hasn't got there yet. Um, I can't answer that. Um, so he just decided to interrupt. Shut him. up, Siri. Um, then you see uh, <laughs> the um, Mandalorian Super Commandos, uh, the white the white ones, and uh, you see yes. Sabine's mum. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a Mando. Yeah. Oh, um, so let's just go back to Death Troopers. Oh, yeah. I was well excited to see them, and it totally made sense for a fellow white uniform bloke like Kranich. Well, yeah, because they're Imperial Intelligence. If they've got the same, same tailor, so they've got the same troopers. <laughs> um, what I am a little bit worried about now is that we're going to see these guys all the time when we've never seen them before. <laughs> yeah, but the only other white suit that we've seen is um, uh, Wolfie Laren. Yeah? Mm. And so we see him in this trailer. Yeah, but what about right. the Death Troopers? I don't want to see loads of them now either. Well, you shouldn't do. Only if you see Imperial Intelligence, who we don't really see that much. Mm. Yeah? Right? Because the only time you've seen him in his, you've seen um, Ularin in his white suit was at the table on the desk. Yeah, shop. I guess. So there's no troops there. There's just the navy troopers at the door, standing like that. But um, yeah, now you are going to start seeing them more. They're the new cool trooper. You shouldn't see Scarif troopers, right? You no. won't see those. But although I think they're really cool, but you won't because that is just the uniform they wear on Scarif. On Scarif. Um, but yeah, Death Troops, I think you're going to start seeing a lot more of those. Um, okay. so you'll just start seeing more characters introduced that wear the white uniform. That'll become the new the new thing right. for the Chief Baddie. I'm guessing, because Death Troops are really popular. Everyone liked them, right? And they're, they're a great toy. So 
it's, <laughs> that's what's going to happen, unless they come up with something new that we've never seen before. Um, what else was in the trailer that we liked? Um, yeah, seeing the, the Mandalorians, you see her mum. You get so tell you what you don't see gone. is a lot of the normal crew. No, you it's don't, really you? weird. You hardly see them. They're showing you all the other cool stuff that they're going to yeah. have. Say like they talking. know that I don't want to see them. <laughs> well, there's a lot more popular characters, aren't there? Yeah. Um, but as you say, like you see Tarkin in the hologram. We, we've seen Thrawn um, shooting a blaster. Uh, you see him doing a bit of uh, um, martial arts. And some great space battles, and then of course that review that, that reveal of Obi Wan, and they kindly tied it all together between Episode Three and Episode Four by making him go like that with his lightsaber <laughs> right at the end. Was cool. Was cool. <laughs> so yeah. So was, so generally we're on a high. We're looking forward to the next know, half of Rebels. I am looking forward to it. Yeah. That, Don't that cock it up, Filoni. Yeah, and that returns this weekend. That, yes, the, the episode yeah, comes yeah. back this Saturday, so uh, that's yeah, we'll be able to watch that. Yeah, I'll be uh, watching that bad boy. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, and, that's and that trailer tied on to that. Then is the sort of next little story, which is yeah, not next a huge story, story is but... um, obviously the the voicing of um, some of these characters. Um, so James Arnold Taylor did uh, Obi Wan. Did he do that in the Clone Wars? So he, he did Obi Wan in the Clone Wars. Yeah, and he. Has done him in that in that bit what we talked about earlier, yes. you know, the, and the Jedi holocron. He actually recorded the voice for um, episode seven as well, and then they got Hugh McGregor oh. and used his voice instead. Oh, right. Um, um, so he he's he's still down to play a younger Obi Wan, but they brought in Stephen Stanton to do the voice of the older mm. Obi Wan in Rebels, yeah. and he was also the um, voice of Admiral Radius Radius. Um, from Rogue One, and he also played Tarkin in, in, in the Rebels, Rebels and Clone Wars. So, yeah. so he'll also do Tarkin's voice here as well. Why do they need someone different to do a slightly older voice? Well, I guess he, well, he he probably does a good impression of um, Alec Guinness. You do so. a good impression. Do it again. I like that. Alec. <laughs> well, come here, my little friend. Don't yeah, I like it. It's good. You sound like him. I like that. Yeah. So yeah, he'll. Um, yeah, I guess he just does a better impression of an older version of Obi Wan. I think they should have got you, Jay. I do. I, I think that I should totally have some kind of job, some somewhere to do with Star Wars at Lucasfilm. But as we know, Kathleen Kennedy loves watching this show, so yeah. hopefully after well, that she's yeah. going to you know call up. I'd be happy to make her tea, to be honest. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I reckon I could be a good stand-in for old Obi Wan. Well, yeah, you could. You've got a beard. They just have to spray it yeah. grey. You know? I'll, well, I'll be the young one. I'll be young Obi Wan. You can be old Obi Wan. Hmm. No, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> anyway, so that story. Yeah, excellent yeah, story. That's, uh, you know, he's a obviously a talented voice actor. He does a Tarkin. He does um, Radis. So yeah, you know, we've heard the little clip of him there in the trailer. Yeah. Um, the only it's it's weird though, like how they. They use all these different people because the uh, guy Henry that played uh, Tarkin in Rogue One, that was his voice. Yeah, so why not just carry on? Right? Yeah. But, um, well, I mean, this guy's played him in the cartoon, so, yeah. You know, but also, in, uh, in um, episode three, mm. the guy that played Tarkin, uh, I know him from from, um, from Farscape. Yeah, that's right. Scorpius, or yeah. whatever his name was. That's him. And I loved Farscape. Yeah, I never watched it, but I've got another friend that really likes it. Yeah, bloody yeah. good. Yeah. Good sci-fi. And the uh, little alien bloke looks like um, the Australian bloke on MasterChef, <laughs> <laughs> which no one's going to get. So let's not no, talk I, about I that. <laughs> no, okay. That's just a joke for me and my like wife, because we always... Yeah, him. Does he? We call okay. him Rigel. <laughs> so me and my wife sit there and go, oh, Rigel, Rigel. Anyway, let's not go about it. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with Star Wars. Yeah, we're and really getting off topic. No that. one's listening. <laughs> um, right, OK. All right, next story. Let's, next story. Let's so you're going to tell me about what Adam Driver's been saying on Larry King. Ah, OK. Yep, Adam Driver on Larry King. Let me just check my notes I made. Um, yeah, um, he is just talking about Kylo Ren. Um, and He's going to be a bit different in episode eight, apparently. Well, they asked him what we're going to see different about Kylo Ren in episode eight, and he didn't oh, really leading question. 
Yeah, he didn't really give much of an answer. Um, he just sort of said that they get to explore the character a bit more in episode eight because um, in the in the first in episode seven there was a lot of plot points that they knew that they had to hit to move hit, the story yeah. along. Whereas in this one they get to sort of open it up and get into the characters a bit more. Obviously, um, you know, uh, um, Snoke says it's time to to. Training, complete your training, complete um, training. Yeah. Um, and then Larry King said to him um, will Kylo Ren survive episode 8 and Adam Drive said it depends on what your idea of living is so what what, what do you make of that depends I what think your idea of living is the obvious thing would be either similar to um Darth Vader, how um, Anakin turned to Darth Vader and became a new personality. Mm. Or, again, even more like Darth Vader and Anakin, that he gets a bit chopped up and Becomes damaged. Yeah. More, more machine than man. That, that's where I started. To, that's where my mind started but, to go. But isn't that too, or, or too similar to... Like, fully dark side, tormented. Like, mm. is that living? Or, um, yeah, or, or maybe dies and becomes a force ghost <laughs> but i don't what, think so. I, what i would prefer to see is going back to him being tormented about killing han and rather than it being a physical manifest manifestation or it being replicating what happened to vader because i think that's a dodgy line to go down i don't really want to see him replicate that vader's story i'd rather see about a guy who is absolutely realised he did the wrong thing in Force Awakens and is basically having to live with knowing that he's made all the wrong steps and he might even have gone down it so far he can't turn back. Yeah, but he knows much more complex. Yeah, and he knows that he actually... So he's still working for Snoke, he's still doing all the things that Snoke commands, but inside he knows he's doing the wrong thing and then ultimately by episode nine it, it just have to well the, the interesting thing about um about ben solo was that um he was being pulled to the light side not the dark side and he was trying to fight the light side and and be dark yeah most yeah. people it's the other way around yeah um and you know obviously like when he talks to han he's like i know what i need to do and mm -hmm. he's all about i know what i need to do to be dark I know what I've got to do. Can you help me? And Han unfortunately said, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. he was like, thanks. <laughs> Spoiler. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, there'll probably always be that element where he's having that fight with the light side and he's trying to stay dark, you know? Yeah. Um, but obviously at the same time, having done what he did, that's mm -hmm. pushed him over the edge to the dark side. So um, there's actually... Uh, uh, there is a spoiler in the next um, news story that does tie into Kylo Ren a little bit. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's interesting. He doesn't really give anything away because that could just be taken. I mean, that that is a real offhanded comment. Does he survive? Depends on what your idea of surviving it, of living is. And it's like, oh, that gave people something to talk about because we're doing it right now. Mm. But it could just be, I just came up with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, he's just, just trying to deflect an answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, totally. Um, yeah, so that's it. There's there's not a lot in that story. So is that really a non-story, Jay? One of our famous non-stories. We do that we like, like non-stories, and look, it's a story as much as it's a non-story. Adam Driver <laughs> shrugs his shoulders. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's exactly what it is. And there's a yeah. little video um, on on the link for that. So uh, does it go? If you want to watch this. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I wish someone would tell me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All so, right. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So is that the end of news? I think it is. That's all. The, um, the oh one, but... yes. One more news uh -huh. story. So this one is a bit potentially spoiler. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. So get your old spoiler alert on, Jay. Burr, 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 burr. Okay. Right. We're safe. Myself. We're safe. Right. A couple go. of minutes. Come back in a few minutes if you don't want any spoiler. I don't think it's even a spoiler. But never mind. Well, there's there's a there's a couple of bits in this that could be considered spoilers. So I'm going to give you the overview here. So basically, Disney slash Lucasfilm 
are thinking about what they're going to do after Carrie Fisher's death and how that's going yeah. to impact what they yeah. do with the rest of the films. Yeah. Tell so, me more, Jay. Okay. Do you want me to say what the spoiler things are? There's two yes. things you do. Okay. Because I don't believe it's going to be a spoiler. Right. Before I go into those, um, they, as they talk about um, Carrie Fisher's role, she was meant to have a much larger role in episode eight, which yes, is all finished. You know, they, they filmed that. And then, supposedly, in Colin Trevorrow's episode nine, she was meant to have an even bigger role. Oh, why? Right. Right? So, that tells us one thing about episode eight. She right? survives. Right. There's a spoiler. So, but uh, that makes it three spoilers then. Um, so, they're trying to decide what they should do. And part of it is the potential... I'm, I'm looking away from camera because I'm just trying to read because I made some notes. Um, part of it is... and you should, I'll put a link to this article. Made notes? What is this thing you talk <laughs> of? So, this, this is a report that came from the Hollywood Reporter. They had an insider um, that got all this information. Um, I'll put a link to the full article underneath the video, and you should check it out. It's worth mm. having a read. But oh, briefly... Um, is it on Force Conversation Facebook page? I did post it today, yeah. Um, so Colin Trevorrow is going to be meeting up with Disney execs um, from January 10th, so next week, to discuss um, possibilities and what they could do, possible rewriting and reshooting her parts. And this could also be something that might happen with Episode 8, with... Like, you know, well, they have to change it, stuff, potentially, right? yeah. Now, here's the spoiler bits. There were two scenes with Leia in Episode 8. One of them is reuniting with Luke. Right? Well, so, we thought that would happen, surely. Okay. So there's that one. The other one is a confrontation with Kylo Ren. Right? Now, look, now you're upset that I spoiled it, aren't you? No, no, I'm not upset. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, because that could t- that could be anything. It could be. It could be like, that could why be, did uh, you do that uh, to your dad? Or it could be like, she, they have a yeah. punch-up. Right? Also, it might not even be in person. It could be on the phone. It could yeah, be well, via Holonet. It could be any of those things. So, yeah, so these are those are the two spoilers. But I just want to be careful because some people will be like, ah, oh, that's told me what could happen in the story, you know, and... and um, Which means it could all change. But this could all change. So it it's potentially change. a spoiler, but it could not, because now, if they reshoot or rewrite it, they'll have to change that bit of the story. So maybe they want to have a, uh, a confrontation with Kylo Ren, but now it's going to impact the rest of the movies if they do it with Leia. We don't know what's going to happen there. So then they said, look, you know, he's meeting up with all these execs in January, uh, on January 10th, um, to discuss their possibilities. Uh, you know, people at Lucasfilm are still heavily mourning um, Carrie Fisher's death. So they're not really, you know, they've got a year to play around with this. They're not going to start filming until mm-hmm. early um, 2018. Um, and then there was another thing where they said, you know, they, they could cut her role down in both films and maybe shift the focus away from Leia more than they already have it, um, either with possibly using CGI, which a lot of people are moaning about this, but you know this is one of those things that if her, if her family consent and this doing justice character, I don't think it's a problem, and it wouldn't be like we saw with Tarkin, but more that you, you see her just in glimpses, so you don't really see a lot of her, so they change the story and work it out that way and of course they might use body doubles in some bits mm-hmm. and stuff like that um, but yeah, so it's it's really changing um, the way that um, the, the movies are going to play out now, so they already had their story there obviously, unfortunately, this happened and... See, I'm really surprised that Leia was going to play a major part, because I always thought these films were about create. You know, I thought Force yeah, Awakens was yeah, about was, setting up the new characters yeah, and us moving passing. away. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. thought by the end of Episode Eight, we probably wouldn't have any of the old characters in. With my view, well, I mean, you know, the thing is, her role you would kind of expect to be a little bit bigger because obviously Luke's going to come back. We see that from the end of Episode Seven. You're going to get someone, and they're going to reunite. We all expected that bit, so. A bit bigger in that way. See, I uh, don't even know if I did expect that. I thought the Luke storyline was going to be separate. 
I didn't, I didn't think, the, I didn't think the, they were going to cross out. I, I didn't really expect them to meet. Well, honest. I, I didn't. And that's why in episode seven, I was a little bit surprised when Han Solo died without seeing Luke. Because I was like, oh, man, Solo never meets up with Luke again. That mm. sucks. And then it was like, oh, you've got the original three there. You don't that would have been nice together, to see the three right? of them together, yeah. And, and so then Luke and Leia, brother and sister, I did think that they would come together at some point. Um, in the next movie but then it's the the bit where they say about the confrontation with Kylo Ren because that is moving her into more of a role like you know he's killed his dad she obviously felt it through the force and now she wants to like have it out with her son right so um, that you know she has to have a large role for, for that but then they wanted to have a, an even bigger role in number number nine I don't know where that was going doesn't make that doesn't make sense to me yeah, well, that's that's just the rumours that's out there anyway. So, um, yeah, so they're reaching her parts, which means changing some of the plot and some of the direction of the story. Um, I think you know, I think the problem is, us, really, knowing is too much now anyway, in the day, I, from just the way that The Force Awakens was, was wrote, with um, the way that JJ and um, Kaz, Kaz then, Kathleen... Kathleen. Yeah, oh, basically... Kathleen, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, throughout the whole of the shooting, we're changing and working and evolving yeah. the script. To be honest, I and and, and do that anyway, right? Yeah, and it just sounds to me that it it seems a bit too plotted out. I think surely you'd want to see what episode eight does. I think this is a little bit of a, a reaction um, to her mm. dying because um, Ryan Johnson um, wrote his uh, scripts for episode eight based on early drafts for episode seven. Right, mm. then when um, JJ put out episode seven, it was different, mm. and so he had to change it. He rewrote, right? Mm. So, um, so it's always going to have to so be it's a always rewrite. Happening. And you know, as we saw with uh, with Rogue One, you know, it had all the reissues. So everyone's like, ah, this is a catastrophe. It's not necessarily a catastrophe. All movies have reissues. These were, you know, big reissues. Mm. Um, but what but it made out was, made an excellent film, movie, you know, and yeah. and that's that's with all art. It's even like you know, if you take drawing, you know, you, you start out drawing something, and then as you're going along, your ideas change, and you change it, and it becomes Absolutely. something yeah. different. So same with movies. Um, this is this is actually just that instead of it being an organic change, something's happened here that's made them go, oh, we have to do something, you know. Um, and it's I think it's a bit of a this has just happened. Oh my God, what are we going to do? And yeah, let's now react. it's like, let's have meetings. Let's all discuss what we're going to do. And, you know, I suppose they want to get on it because they want to get ready for production, for pre-production and all that stuff. So mm. um, it's it's just that. But um, what the main part of that story is, is that there was already ideas for the character where she was meant to go and that um, they're considering the possibility of using some CG for certain scenes, which, to be honest, like there's a lot of CG scenes with characters that we see in movies anyway that you don't even realise the CG. It's just them from the side, or you know what I mean, like in the distance or whatever, and all the backgrounds are CG and all that stuff. I mean, you see the Batman Superman CG, how they put it all together, yeah. all of the cars and background. I was like, that was CG. I thought that was real. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the story there with that one. So potential spoilers. Um, does this mean spoilers over? Yeah, spoilers over. If you're, if you turn the sound down, look now. You can come back. Okay, cool. Right, spoilery people, right. we're we are done spoiling yeah. things and the, the until I start spoiling more things as well. So that's speculation. Pardon? The Adam Driver thing was speculation as well. So that's done. yeah, speculation, um, not really spoilers. Okay, so that is going to be the end of part one we've overrun the time that we were going to film for so we decided to cut this episode in two so that you don't get too bored or um you know get too enamored by looking at our faces for so long i don't um, want you being hypnotized and having to think about me all day so right. you know take a break stop looking at me for five minutes come on so uh, go make a cup of tea and then watch the second part do what he says go make a cup of tea um you know, you can find us on all the usual spots. So we have a group on Facebook, which is called Force Conversation. We're on Twitter at... Which is at Force Convo. And you can also use the hashtag Force Convo. You can get us on email at... Force Conversations at gmail.com. No, Force Convo at gmail.com. <laughs> 
you can get me on twitter at the underscore letter j underscore tank and you can get colin on twitter at captain colin and we are on soundcloud we are on itunes and we're on the taylor network of podcasts where they have this great show and a whole host of other shows such as uh governed by geeks go check yourself uh nothing's on just to name a few of the amazing podcasts on there and um yeah so until part two of this episode may the force be with you it's a trap Thank you.